No, the final speaker should be Abdullah Jirai uh, Jaglici. I hope this is right. And he's a, a fifth year PhD student at the, in the Safari Research Group at ETH Zurich, working with Professor Onu Mutlu. And he, his current broader research interests are in computer architecture, systems, and hardware security with a special focus on DRAM robustness and performance. And uh, one his of his work, Blockhammer, was named after the finalist uh, by Intel in 2021 for the Intel Hardware Security Acad Academic Award, and his Warhammer research is part of uh, is supported by Google and the Microsoft Swiss Joint Center. And with this, uh, I think now virtually the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as you said, uh, Professor Motley is not with us uh, for because of a conflict today, so I will sub uh, try substituting for him. And this talk is about fundamental understanding and solving raw hammer. It's uh, the, the paper we published in ASPDAC is in the nature of a survey. So I'll be mentioning several works. Um, uh, so uh, this talk is going to be mostly about reliable security and safety of our systems to avoid uh, this kind of collapses in our systems. And when we talk about secure, security is about preventing unforeseen consequences. And uh, we, we don't want unforeseen consequences in our platforms for sure. So in particular, uh, we will be focusing on the uh, raw hammer phenomenon. It's a phenomenon where one can predictably induce bit flips in commodity DRAM chips. And most of the DRAM chips on the market are vulnerable uh, to this phenomenon. And uh, this is the first example of a, how a, a simple hardware failure mechanism can create a widespread system security vulnerability. And as a result, you see articles like uh, forget software, now hackers are exploiting physics. Uh, so I'd like to remind you uh, early uh, positioning paper about memory scaling. Uh, so this, this uh, paper talks about the scaling problems of DRAM. In essence, uh, a DRAM cell uh, uh, stores a bit of uh, data as a, as a charge on a capacitor and it's access through the access transistor. And, both of these components, capacitor and transistor, should be large enough for reliable operation. And it becomes really challenging uh, when we scale down the technology node. And uh, a characterization work from 2015 actually shows that in all Facebook servers worldwide, as you increase the uh, chip density used in DRAM modules, uh, you have an increase in the server failure rates. And this is a, a good evidence that uh, DRAM scaling is a problem. And uh, for that, uh, to, to understand more about the RAM scaling problem, we need infrastructures to understand, to understand these. And in particular, I'm going to talk about a paper. So there, there are many papers pu uh, published using similar infrastructures. I'm going to talk about this uh, Philippine Bits paper from ISCA 2014 uh, to begin with. So this is the infrastructure we used in this paper. Uh, it, it provides us with a temperature controlled environment uh, for D testing DRAM modules. And later on, we actually uh, open source this infrastructure. It's uh, available online. Uh, you can just download and use it on your FPGAs. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I'll talk about the discoveries we had in this ISCA 14 paper. So the uh, takeaway is that one can predictably induce errors in most DRAM memory chips. And this is a simple hardware failure mechanism that can create a widespread system security vulnerability. So uh, how this uh, errors happen is as follows. So DRAM is organized as uh, an array of DRAM rows. Uh, and uh, within each row, you have uh, kilobytes of data. And to access data, you need to basically uh, perform an operation called row activation that opens the row. And then uh, to access another row, you need to close this row. And when you do this operation many times, you, you start seeing bit flips in neighboring rows. and this. Uh, simply breaks memory isolation, which is a, a, a key security primitive in current systems. So we call this uh, row that we keep open and closing as hammer row or aggressive row, and the rows affected as victim rows. And uh, the, doing this uh, kind of access pattern actually induces bit flips in many DRAM chips from uh, three major manufacturers, as uh, shown experimentally in this paper. And uh, uh, there, I, I'll mention quickly a few uh, observations from this paper. The first one is that newer chips are vulnerable to raw hammer. Uh, starting from 2012, we see all chips from all manufacturers are being vulnerable. 
And what happens underlying in the underlying technology is that DRAM cells get too close to each other with DRAM technology scaling, and they uh, lose their electrical isolation from each other. And uh, access in one uh, induces electrical interference uh, between uh, between these cells and the wires access used accessing the cells. And from cell to cell coupling and interference causes this kind of uh, error mechanism. So when we activate a row many times, uh, adjacent rows get slightly activated as well. It exacerbates charge leakage. And as a result, we see bit Phillips. And uh, <clears throat> it, it, it affects uh, uh, many parts of the system in the system stack. So here's a simple program, program from the software level that can induce bit Phillips. Uh, what this program does is basically it opens draw X here and then draw Y. And then when, the, when you uh, do this in a loop, you see bit Phillips uh, uh, nearby. And uh, we show that uh, many Intel and AMD based systems are uh, vulnerable to this phenomenon because it's not really a, a processor issue, it's a DRAM issue and DRAM is used in many commodity systems today. So uh, this is the full reference to paper. Uh, and right after we published this paper in 2014, Google Project Zero actually adopted this and came up with a reliable uh, attack. Uh, basically what they do is they uh, induce these bit flips in page table entries in the, uh, in the physical DRAM. And uh, as a result, they get access to the whole uh, page table and uh, the whole system. So they can take over a system using raw hammers. And this is the raw hammer vulnerability. And uh, after it is uh, published, it, it had many implications, many security implications in many different papers. So you can uh, see in the literature that uh, it's experimental demonstrated that you can induce raw hammer bit flips using JavaScript code. You can do this on mobile systems. You can use GPUs to induce raw hammer bit flips. You can use uh, network packets and uh, remote direct memory accesses to induce uh, raw hammer bit flips. And you can only you can not only use raw hammer bit flips to take over the system, but you can also uh, leak data without being noticed. And also you can change uh, some parameters of some critical applications and change their behavior and, uh, for example, reduce the accuracy of a critical uh, deep neural network. And uh, this is uh, <clears throat> not also a DRAM uh, uh, problem, uh, as we see. Uh, so we there there is some strong evidence in the literature also showing that some other memory technologies can be affected from these read disturbance errors, uh, and uh, we expect more security implications to come. Uh, and uh, uh, we 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 already uh, have a retrospective paper published in two thousand nineteen, actually uh, covering most of these works. And this is the paper that we publish in this ASP deck uh, with updated uh, uh, invest, uh, advancements in the, in the literature. So uh, this talk has like two parts and the first part is understanding raw hammer. About this, I'm gonna uh, refer back to 2014 paper. And um, I, I'd like to say that we uh, tested many chips and we had a lot of characterization results. I'll focus on uh, a few of them. The first one is that uh, so on the x-axis here, you see the row address difference. So victim rows relative address to the aggressor row. So we hammer row zero here. And uh, on the y-axis, we see the bit flips. And uh, we observe that most of the bit flips are accumulated in uh, the physically adjacent rows uh, to this uh, aggressor row, but some non-adjacent rows also uh, uh, experience bit flips. And uh, another observation is that uh, we can reduce the number of bit flips if we uh, reduce the activation interval of an ag uh, aggressor row. So as the, as the aggressor row activated less frequently, we see fewer errors. And also if we refresh the victim rows more frequently, we see fewer errors again. And also there's data, the, the data pattern dependency of this phenomenon. So if you change the data pattern in a smart way, you can actually induce many more errors. And uh, there are many other key observations in the paper. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'll refer you to the uh, full paper here. And uh, this is not the only paper about characterization in uh, recent years, starting from 2020. Uh, we actually published uh, three new papers uh, investigating different size of the row hammers. 
And I'll also mention them in the future, but um, uh, for now, I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna talk about the Rohammer solutions. So in this uh, 2014 paper, we uh, classify the solutions as the immediate and long-term solutions for uh, protecting the RAM chips that are already in the field or the future ones. And uh, we talk about seven solutions uh, and here's a list. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Uh, a naive solution is just increasing the refresh rate and that's what Apple did after uh, found the, the Rohammer is investigated. And uh, this is the solution that we uh, proposed in, the, in that paper called para probable schedules and row activation. So the key idea is that uh, after you activate a row with a, a very low probability, you go uh, and refresh the nearby rows. And uh, it, it gives you a good reliability guarantee. It refreshes rows very infrequently and it is stateless. Uh, meaning that it doesn't require maintaining a large amount of metadata. So it, it, uh, it has low com cost and complexity and it's an effective low overhead solution to prevent disturbance errors uh, based on the vulnerability level we had in 2014, of course. And it has some requirements about uh, different implementations, uh, uh, but they are not really uh, challenging requirements. Uh, as you can see in a BIOS setting, we see a hardware raw hammer solution here uh, with some raw hammer activation probability. So we uh, observe that uh, para is already implemented in some systems. So this was the Philippine bits paper. And uh, here is the takeaway that I want to mention. Uh, main memory needs intelligent controls for security, safety, reliability, and scaling. And raw hammers particular, we definitely need intelligent controllers to uh, do this. Uh, and um, uh, we, we, we also see intelligent controllers and non flashes as uh, I mentioned in the previous talk. Um, so uh, we, we should have similar uh, controllers for memor uh, DRAM memories as well. Uh, as we see in flash controllers, we see similar error uh, characteristics and uh, we see uh, we, we, we have the same need for DRAM basically. Uh, so we have more detailed lectures on Rohammer. I'll just uh, leave the links in the slide so you can refer them to refer back to them later on. And uh, this is the full paper again. And these are some uh, retrospective papers. And I'll uh, start talking about uh, the uh, new things in the literature starting from 2020. So uh, this is the first paper that we published in 2020, uh, Revisiting Raw Hammer. So we basically uh, did the same characterization on newer DRAM chips. And we also looked into uh, in a in a deeper way. Uh, and we observed that newer DRAM chips are much more vulnerable. So uh, before we needed uh, hundreds of hundred thousand activations a row uh, to induce bit Phillips. Now it's just possible to induce bit Phillips only by like around 5,000 hammers. And this is something really important uh, because uh, it, it shows that row hammer vulnerability is getting much worse uh, in, in less than six years. So, um, Okay, so here, uh, this is the DRAM testing infrastructure we had, and we tested many chips, uh, more than uh, 1,500. And uh, we observed that Rohammer bit flip rates increased from old to new uh, DRAM chips, and uh, new technologies are more vulnerable to Rohammer. And also, it requires less activa fewer activations to induce a bit flip in newer DRAM chips. And uh, we can in, uh, induce bit flips in very low activation counts. Uh, so it becomes really challenging to uh, protect our systems. And uh, there's also a detailed lecture about resistant raw hammer. Uh, so after raw hammer is uh, published uh, in 2014, after a few years, uh, some DRAM manufacturers uh, claimed that uh, they sold raw hammer internally without uh, open sourcing their solution. And uh, in this work uh, called Traspass, we actually investigated if those DRAM chips are actually really safe. And this, uh, pub this work is published in a security and privacy conference in 2020. And it's the first work to show that uh, this target row refresh protected DRAM chips are vulnerable to row hammer in the field. And mitigations advertised as secure are not secure. And it, it basically introduces a new uh, attack pattern that actually can uh, walk around uh, these uh, solutions. And uh, the key idea is to hammer many rows so that you uh, confuse the uh, uh, on die uh, protection mechanism. And as a result, you can uh, in induce bit Phillips. And it partially reverse engineers all these mechanisms. And it pr proposes an automatic tool that can effectively create many sided row hammer attacks. This is a picture of the row hammer attack pattern. You basically 
concurrently hammer multiple rows in uh, alternating uh, placement. Okay, so these are the DRAM chips that uh, they test uh, in that paper. And uh, they, uh, the, the paper also shows that uh, many mobile phones are actually vulnerable to, to row hammer, even though these uh, on-die solutions. And there are many attacks that can be, uh, 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 that can be mounted using these uh, vulnerabilities. And um, as a key result, uh, we have many DRAM chips and modules and phones that are vulnerable. And there's a lot of room for uncovering more vulnerable chips and phones. And uh, it, it shows that Rohammer is still an open problem and uh, security by obscurity is likely not a good solution. And uh, the, here's another paper, uh, here, here is a full paper. And um, we also uh, see uh, how can we guarantee that uh, a chip is raw hammer free and it's, it's, it seems like it's, it's hard to guarantee actually. Uh, we also have uh, some follow-up works about uncovering these TRR mechanisms more. Uh, so this tool basically proposes a methodology and uh, using data retention failures to uncover inner workings of TRR mechanisms. And it uh, automatically generates some new raw hammer access patterns that does not, uh, that, that uh, basically uh, pro um, defeats uh, the on-die DRAM, uh, on-die raw hammer protection mechanisms. And uh, the key idea is to use data retention failures. This is the infrastructure we used for this paper. And uh, we showed that uh, we tested 45 modules and all of them are vulnerable. And most of the rows can uh, experience raw hammer bit flips. And ECC is not an effective solution because we have many bit flips in a data world. Uh, okay, so uh, I already talked about these. I'm just gonna skip these. And uh, this is the full paper. So uh, we also looked at a new Rohammer characteristics, the Rohammer sensitivities to different dimensions, uh, such as temperature, the access pattern, and the victim DRAMs as physical location. And uh, we showed that a Rohammer bit flip is more likely to occur in a bounded range of temperature if the aggressor is active for longer time and in certain physical regions of DRAM modules under attack. And um, we hope that uh, this will uh, uh, give us insights necessary for uh, achieving more secure systems. And uh, there are some uh, improvements that we propose in the paper for attacks and defenses. I'm not going to go through them. I'm just going to show them here. Uh, for example, we see a strong variation in, um, uh, in, in Rohammer vulnerability across different DRAM rows. And uh, as a solution improvement, we can uh, actually use this uh, uh, heterogeneity of the vulnerability level to reduce the uh, overheads of the state-of-the-art row hammer solutions, for example. Or uh, we have a vulnerable temperature range where each row is vulnerable, so we can uh, retire rows based on uh, the, their vulnerable temperature range, for example. So we, we discuss all these solutions in detail in this paper. Uh, I'll refer you to those. And we also have a YouTube uh, lecture. Uh, we have a lecture on YouTube available. So we have more Rohammer analyses. Uh, so we have another paper uh, published in DSN last year uh, showing Rohammer's vulnerability to the voltage. So it's, it turns out that when we reduce the voltage on the word line, it reduces the interference. So it reduces row hammer vulnerability at the cost of increasing row, activi row activation latency and data retention time. And as a result, uh, we can reduce row hammer vulnerability by operating the DRAM and it in, in lower voltage. Uh, but at the same time, it can affect reliable DRAM operation, but the effect is not very significant as we show in this paper. Um, okay, so uh, I'll also quickly talk about solutions. So this is a solution that was published in HPC 2021 uh, based on uh, throttling. So we uh, have, we classify, uh, we, we provide a survey actually of raw hammer mitigation mechanisms in this paper. And we show that all of them has some cost power uh, performance and complexity trade-offs. And uh, in this paper, our key ch challenges are scalability uh, with worsening raw hammer and compatibility with commodity DRAM chips. And our goal is to prevent raw hammer uh, uh, by overcoming these two challenges. And our key idea is selectively throttle memory accesses that may cause row hammer bit flips. Uh, what happens is when a row hammer attack hammers row A, block hammer detects a row hammer attack using area efficient balloon filters. And it basically slows down uh, selectively some memory requests so that the row A is not being activated many times. So bit flips do not occur. And block hammer can optionally inform the system software about the attack, and it's compatible with commodity DRAM chips, and it does, as it does not need any proprietary info of or modifications to DRAM chips, unlike 
other state-of-the-art uh, mitigation mechanisms. We, uh, we evaluate the scalability of this mechanism and we show that its performance and energy has remained negligible as uh, raw hammer goes uh, bad, uh, worse, and uh, when, when there's no raw hammer attack on a system. And when there is raw hammer attack on a system, it actually uh, throttles the attack very successfully and it provides some uh, performance improvement on the concurrent and benign applications. And uh, yeah, so here are some key results. Uh, we evaluate 14 other mechanisms uh, for, for, for these four aspects, and we show that block hammer is the only solution that uh, satisfies all these aspects. Uh, and uh, we have many more results. We talk about the uh, new and emerging uh, raw hammer attacks based on uh, the uh, trespass uh, patterns, uh, how, we, uh, how we protect our systems against these attacks. And uh, Block Hammer is the first work to practically enable throttling based raw hammer mitigation. It's implemented fully in the memory controller. It, it is compatible with commodity DRAM chips and it's scalable and it is open source along with uh, six state of the art mechanisms uh, on the GitHub link. And uh, okay, to remind you uh, the takeaway in the beginning, the memory needs intelligent controllers for security, safety, reliability, and uh, scaling. And uh, these were the uh, uh, classifications of the uh, uh, current mitigation mechanisms we uh, mentioned in Block Hammer paper. And uh, after Block Hammer, we also have other papers in the literature uh, from other groups. Uh, this is a new uh, approach uh, based on raw migration. Dyna the key idea is to dynamically remap an aggressive raw address to a different physical raw before a raw hammer bit flip occurs so that uh, victim rows are not being hammered con uh, all the time. And there are like up, uh, the, there are two papers from 22 and two papers coming up uh, in 23 uh, about that. So as you see, we are not the only group working on raw hammers. Uh, we have many papers uh, starting from 2020, micro SMP security, uh, hot OS, smash, all these conferences. Uh, so um, there are many papers in the literature basically. And uh, this is another paper we published in last October in Micro uh, to reduce the refresh uh, overhead uh, to protect raw hammer. And uh, we have uh, also some other papers uh, in the preprint now. I, I'd like to, to refer you to them. And um, uh, there, there is a paper uh, about self-managing DRAM. So um, the key, I, uh, the, the problem is that when we need this new uh, reliability countermeasures, uh, or security countermeasures, uh, we, we need to modify the whole system. And with the current JDAC standards, it's not very easy to do. And uh, there are a lot of uh, problems uh, when you want to implement a new uh, maintenance operation. And this uh, paper actually uh, proposes to do uh, modify DRAM in a way that these maintenance operations can be easily implemented in the DRAM itself. And it shows how DRAM refresh or home protection and memory scrubbing can be implemented. And uh, there's a um, full talk about this as well. And this is the full paper. And um, we have more upcoming papers in 2023 about raw hammers, uh, uh, countermeasures, uh, and that we expect more to come. And it's, it's really an important problem. And uh, in future, uh, it's for sure DRAM is becoming less reliable. And uh, due to difficulties in DRAM scaling, other problems may also appear. And these errors can also pose uh, significant security vulnerabilities. And the uh, future of uh, main memory security is uh, in, in, uh, important. Uh, I mean, from the raw hammer's perspective, uh, the main memory security is important. It's, it affects DRAM, flash memory, and emergent technologies. So we need to find uh, intelligent controllers to avoid uh, such problems in the future. And intelligent controllers can avoid many failures and enable better scaling. And for this, we need to understand uh, the vulnerability through experiments and reliable metrics. Uh, and we need to architect principal architectures to uh, protect our systems, basically. And uh, patchability is a key uh, feature here. Um, because the, the vulnerabilities approach after we market the chips and we need to be able to patch the chips to uh, address those vulnerabilities. And design for security is uh, also a key. And for understand raw hammer, there are many uh, uh, characterization studies that needs to be done. Uh, they are not in the literature yet. And for solving raw hammer, it's still a challenge to find flexible and efficient raw hammer solutions. And co-architecting systems and memory is also important to address all these scalability uh, uh, problems. And uh, this is the paper again uh, we have in this in this ASP deck. 
And this is a positioning paper, and this is a self-managing DRAM paper that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, conduct more experiments to understand these uh, vulnerabilities as we de do on flash uh, chips. And uh, again, in field patchability for intelligent memory can avoid uh, such failures. And I'd like to uh, remind you the scaling uh, position paper from 2013 and uh, also industry is aware of these problems and uh, you can see Samsung and Intel publish in this paper. Okay, so the final thoughts about Rohammer. So before Rohammer, we had uh, this kind of intrusive uh, setups to attack DRAM and uh, main memory, but with Rohammer, it's already elevated and we can just do this with software. So it's a much more important problem now. And uh, it, it, it set a new mindset that has enabled a renewed interest in hardware security attack. Uh, real memory chips are vulnerable and this vulnerability can be exploited in many levels. So uh, there are many raw, new Rohammer attacks and new Rohammer solutions are coming. And uh, most importantly, Rohammer enabled a shift in the mindset in mainstream security researchers. General purpose hardware is fallible, its problems are exploitable, and this mindset enabled many system security researchers to examine hardware in more depth, and it has a correlation with the other uh, emergent attacks like Meltdown and Spectre. Conclusion, uh, memory reliability is reducing reliability issues open up security vulnerabilities. It's very hard to defend against this, and Rohammer is the prime example of uh, how a simple hardware failure mechanism can create widespread system security vulnerability. And bad news is that Rohammer is getting worse. And good news is that we have a lot more to do and uh, we can we are already doing those. Uh, okay, here is uh, other uh, uh, slide uh, references. Uh, I'd like to thank you all our uh, supporters, companies and institutes. And uh, this is our software research group. Uh, we have a newsletter. Uh, you can just click on the link and see the new things uh, published in our group. And uh, we have uh, open sourced all the lectures uh, about computer architecture, both in master's and undergrad level. And we also offer some practical courses to engage teaching and research together. And this is the end of my talk. Uh, I hope I didn't violate the time too much. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, and I was wondering whether or not you make it for the 200 slides, but apparently you did. Um, <laughs> impressive. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff to digest and I guess lots of weeding to do. We're running a little bit over time and I'm not sure if some other, because officially the, the session is over here and I'm not sure if people want to uh, uh, switch session, but if there's an urgent question because you're also only available virtually, maybe we can just quickly check that and otherwise connect you. Are there any urgent questions here in the room? Or virtually? I would ask a very, very quick question. Yep. Like uh, 10 seconds. You already spoke a bit about the future, but which one you do you think is the first that you urge to do it among the things you list for the future? Uh, which one of what? Like, uh, among, among... You, list, you listed some, some future step and the next yes. step. Which one is the first that you think the most important among the three? All the three are important, but if you have to pick up one, so for so we need uh, some quick solutions for uh, addressing scalable problem. I cannot find that slide now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so um, we we definitely need some solutions. I think it's really uh, urgent. Uh, but uh, for long term, we definitely need to understand this uh, uh, phenomenon more. So more characterization is also needed uh, in the long run. Uh, I would say. Does that answer? Sure, thanks a lot. I can also stick more if there are more questions, actually. Yeah, um, doesn't look like it. And, and as I said, we have to close the session. But what we can do, I mean, you, you, the, the contact data was available, and um, people can probably reach out to you directly by email or so. Okay. With that being said, uh, let, let's thank uh, the speaker again. And. With this, I'm closing the session. Thanks a lot for the participation and see you guys around. Thank you.